production of Television Sports USA, the Mislu Television Network. from the NIT preseason regionals from across the country are here in a big doubleheader of basketball. In game one, the Duke Blue Devils against the St. John's Redmen. In game two, the Louisville Cardinals against the Kansas Jayhawks. And the two winners of these games will meet on Sunday night for this NIT Big Apple preseason championship. Right now, it's my pleasure to bring in the play-by-play -play and color announcers for our first game tonight, Howard David and Coach Bill Rafferty. Thank you, Steve Grad. St. John's was not supposed to be here. They weren't the best to come out of the region, but they played well enough to get here against this great Duke team. I think Louie was very surprised. He's lean. He's not a deep team. He keeps his guards in a long time, so I think he's happy to be here, but fearful of this opponent this evening. You mentioned depth. St. John's, in actuality, has got about seven players that can play tonight with any kind of degree of effectiveness. Duke, meanwhile, is missing their number one center, Jay Bilas. That means freshman Danny Ferry has got to get in. That will pay dividends in March. Well, he's He's not playing well right now. He's got seven turnovers. He's shooting 50% from the foul line. He's an excellent shooter. But their inside game, Duke, is so strong and tough. I think that's what St. John's fears the most. You can't help but being concerned of you, Lou Carnesecca, over the produ productivity of Johnny Dawkins, a consensus All-America from a year ago. Well, he's enjoyable to watch because he runs the floor, runs the break. And if you're a shooter, he'll penetrate, draw a man, and dish the ball off. So I'm looking forward to him this evening. Not only that, but speaking of dishing it off, you got to look for Mark Allery, the six foot eight forward with a good shooting touch. The starting lineups of tonight's game between Duke and St. John's is coming your way from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Stay with us. Who's ready to unleash the most powerful small four by four ever to beat up a mountain? Who's Madison Square Garden in New York City, and here are the officials for tonight's game. They're all out of the Mid-America Conference. On your left, Roger Perrimore. The man in the middle is Sid Rodeheffer. And Terry Cool, the man on the right, they're all from the Mid-America Conference. We'll be officiating tonight's St. John's Duke game, this first game of the semifinals. Second game will have Kansas against Louisville, with the winners to play on Sunday night for the inaugural Big Apple Classic Championship. Here you get a look at one of the greatest in the game. Lou Karnasek the head basketball coach at St. John's. And for the introduction of the starting lineups, let's go to the public address announcer, Carl Martin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. And welcome also to the first Big Apple NIT. And now, here are the starting lineups for the first of the two semifinal games here tonight. First, for the visiting team from St. John's University in Brooklyn. At the boards, number 30, Willie Glass.
Number 31, Shelton Jones. The center is number 21, Walter Berry. And at the guards, number 12, Ron Ruin. And number 13, Mark Jackson. The coach of the Redmond is Lou Conaseca. His assistants are Brian Mahoney, Ron Rutledge, and Al Babo. And here are the Blue Devils of Duke University. At the forwards, number 12, David Henderson. Number 32, Mark Allery. The center is number 35, Danny Ferry. And at the guards, number four, Tommy Amica. And number 24, Johnny Dawkins. The coach of the Blue Devils is Mike Krzyzewski. His assistants, Chuck Swenson, Bob Bender, and Pete Gaudet, and Tommy Rogers. Your officials for this game from the Mid-American Conference, Terry Cool, Sid Rodeheffer, and Roger Parham. Smile, boys. Look at this dang picture. We got bad... So we're ready to go for the opening tip of tonight's game between Duke and St. John's. Howard David along with the coach, Bill Raftery, Danny Ferry, the freshman, will not be jumping center, but rather Mark Allery, the forward will, against Walter Berry. St. John's with Jones, Glass, Berry, Jackson, and Rowan. Duke with Henderson, Allery, Ferry, Amaker, and Dawkins. The ball's in the air, and we're ready. That's and they're going to have to re-jump re uh, it because the toss is bad, as you said. Walter Berry can get up, and I don't think he's up that high. This time the captains controlled easily by Walter Berry and St. John's. This is Mark Jackson. Great man-to-man -man defense by Dirk. They'll switch inside, and then he exchanges outside. Duke and that man underneath the ghost of Rowan. Baseline, the pump fake, and he gets fouled over the top by Amaker. Tommy Amaker, the junior from Falls Church, Virginia, committing the foul, the first one of the game, and it'll send Ron Rowan to the free throw line for two-shot foul. I don't think St. John's will take many quick shots, Howard. They'll be patient. Of course, Duke, on the other hand, will try and up-tempo it, charge up the floor, pressure defense. Rowan was 5 for 5 in the Hartford doubleheader. And a nervous 6 of 6, and St. John's takes the lead. Rowan, the transfer from Notre Dame. Came to St. John's, he said, because of Carter second. Can't think of a better reason. There's Louie without his sweater to start the year. He's waiting for a streak. Yeah, he said that he And got, a sponsor. That's right. The sponsor is probably more accurate. Allery on Jones. Pretty move by Mark Allery. Well, you'll watch all game. I think Duke gets inside as well as anybody in the country. It's going to be tough for St. John's because they don't front that post man. Here's a steal. Great save. It was Henderson with a steal and Dawkins to Henderson. Shot blocked by Willie Glass. Good action, both ends of the floor. Great play by Henderson on the steal. And Muni Smith, the New York Daily News writer, took a shot on that save. Reach in foul on Allery inside. It'll be a non-shooting foul. All right, to some of the articles that Muniz has written, he deserves a couple of shots. Oh. You're out early after the press. <laughs> you notice that little three-quarter denial. Duke does that more often than you'll see St. John's. And I have a feeling tonight, St. John's going to have to switch it inside. Front, do some interesting things if they're going to beat this club. Allery trying to deny Perry the ball. Almost got away with it. This is Mark Jackson being hounded by Tommy Amaker. Right side, Glass are going to get a traveling violation on Willie Glass. Well, that's one particular play kids almost have to forget anymore. Any crossover move 
off the pivot foot. It's usually called the walk anymore. He used to be able to get away with it before everybody, as you said, started to do it. Watch for the power by Duke. Tommy Amaker. This is Ferry who comes out. Henderson and Dawkins with that lefty jumper. Oh, beauty. Does that open it up, too? 4 2 Duke. Rowan looking for help, and he finds Shelton Jones into the full court. Jones wants to take it all the way down, and he is fouled by Danny Ferry. And if he had a shot of Luke on a second, he would have lassoed Shelton Jones. He didn't want him going to the hole like that. If they hadn't fouled, it would have been a break the other way. So Shelton Jones will go to the free throw line. Shelton 7 of 11 in the Hartford two games that St. John's played against Navy and West Virginia for 64%. people refer to Shelton as the Amityville Horror and because that's where he grew up in Amityville Long Island a lot of potential here Howard good athlete can run first control is the key and at that time we kind of second didn't enjoy him going for the hole St. John's four to four from the free throw line and we're tied at four this is Amaker looking to go inside good play defensively by Jones and Jackson fronting and backing the intended receiver who was out on Got a three-quarter of the baseline. Got to do a lot of different things. Here's Rowan with the baseline move in the reverse. Nice move by Ron Rowan, and St. John's retakes the lead, 6-4. David Henderson didn't know if he was going to play or not. Has tendonitis. Very long range for him. Long range and shot. Jones goes airborne for the rebound. You may watch St. John's defensively. They slough off. They're really making it tough to get that ball in deep. Surprising to see Perry take that long range jump shot. Here's Walter Perry. First time he's handled the ball. Pretty smooth. Hangs yeah. pretty well. Yes, he is. They are pretty tough in this building, by the way, regardless of the color shirt on. 68% St. John's record over the years at Madison Square Garden. A great move by Henderson. Oh, oh. Willie left the luggage. <laughs> Eight to six, St. John's. We are seeing two of college basketball's top 20 ranked teams. St. John's ranked 18th by Associated Press Duke, fifth. Walter Berry. Short. And Danny Ferry with the lead to Dawkins. Two on three. Dawkins with a running one-hander. Tipped in by Allery. A lot of white shirts down the floor then. They came in a hurry too, Bill. They sure did. Looked like good balance by St. John's. We're tied at eight. With 16 and a half minutes to play first half. First half of the semifinal doubleheader. Kansas and Louisville in another beauty in the second half. Barry off the pick with the spin move in the paint. Pretty. Of course, Mark Jackson, who made that pass, he's played 77 minutes in two games. He's going to have to play a great 40 tonight for now. Glass, Jackson, Rowan, and Barry played at least 74 minutes apiece in the two games in Hartford. That should pretty well answer whether St. John's will run this year. I doubt it. Henderson wants to take Glass inside, pulls up and hits it. Pretty move by David Henderson, his second. We're tied at 10 with 15.50 to play in the first half. Henderson with four, Allery with four. One thing we may see tonight, too, is Duke does a lot of run and jump. To Jones from Jackson. 12-10, St. John's. Tempo a little faster, perhaps, than Louis wanted it. Well, I think Duke's happy. Even though St. John's is making the baskets, they want to see that fast pace. Dawkins around Rowan like he was standing still. And what's happened twice now, St. John's has not seen the basketball. Two baseline drives, no help. Johnny Dawkins with a pretty bucket. His second bucket. We are tied at a dozen apiece. The tempo right now favors the Duke Blue Devils. We'll be back. Has the fight been set yet? It's in Russia. Has the fight been set yet? It's in Russia. Are you nuts? <laughs> Check 
select newspapers for a theater near you. Thus far in a 12-12 game, Duke is 6 of 9 from the outside. St. John's 3 of 4. They are 4 for 4 from the free throw line. Of course, a lot of easy shots, too. Billy King has come into the game, the sophomore from Sterling, Virginia. He comes into the ball game for Duke in place of David Henderson. Henderson was a questionable starter. Mike Krzyzewski, the head coach of Duke, figuring while the game is important, it's the long range he's got to be looking for. 1-3-1 now, a little half-court trap. Walter Berry on the right side being double teamed and safety valve pass to Jackson. Wasn't very safe, was it? No, almost got it, almost got it taken away. Duke with a lot of pressure on the ball. This is Rowan, Berry, pump fakes once on Allery. Here's a steal. Amaker to Dawkins. Calling for a walk, this is King. Billy King puts Duke in front, 14 to 12. You can see Duke's theory. Put the pressure defensively to ignite some fast breaks. Dawkins a little bit out of control. Got a bailout to King. Ron Rowan. As you look at Luke Carter second. And Jackson in the backcourt. Walter Berry thus far has had one move to the hoop and he's made it. Aside from that, he's been pretty much out of the offense, but it's early. 14-21 to play first half. And with that 45-second clock, the last time they got it down to 15 without really penetrating, Jackson in the air, and Allery with the rebound. Here comes Johnny Dawkins. Gliding down the floor, switches to the right hand. Berry trying to move around Berry. And here's Willie Glass off the Billy King hands. Four shot. Two of them by Perry so far. He's got to be relaxed, playing a little like a freshman early. Rowan looking to go inside to Berry, and he gets it in the paint. He gets in that tight. He's got a variety of moves, but a great post pass by Ron Rowan. Walter Berry said he wants to carry the load this year with the absence of Chris Mullen and Bill Weddington. Not the absence, but the departure. Of course, if you, as you look at Mike Krzyzewski, the head coach at Duke. Mike's dressing a lot better since he left Army. <laughs> Here's Berry. Walked a few times, and they're going to wisely call traveling. Good call. That's what, no those, about that's what those quick jumpers will do to you, though. Willie Glass, Walter Berry. You've got a pump fake. Danny Furry did not keep the foot on the floor here. Now, good reaction by Walter Burry trying to seal it off. Left foot's the pivot foot. You can see it slide. Slid and did the one, two, three, cha-cha. It's Shelton Jones. 13.05 remaining first half. We are tied at 14. Duke and St. John's. Big Apple Classic. Semifinal. Nice pass by Rowan. Inside the glass. Berry looking for the final, and he puts it in. Pretty cut, set that all up. Had the Duke defense collapsing. David Henderson's getting ready to check back into the game for Duke. We're also going to get Martin Nestle waiting to see the size of this tower that's going to come into the game for Duke. A little zone now. There's Amica. And King over the top, tipped up by Ferry and in. We're tied at 16. Duke is crashing the boards. Of course, St. John's able to put everybody down to help out. They're not thinking about fast breaking. Pretty good offensive tip. Duke in that 1-3-1 zone. Oh, Very pass almost take, picked off. Jackson to Glass. Tipped up and missed. Inside is Shelton Jones. Well, they're active. Very quick to the basketball. Shelton Jones, Willie Glass, Walter Burry. Jones likes this kind of game. He likes it inside. Likes to get up there and reach up the top of the backboard. This is a 1-1-3. One, one, a little wrinkle by Lou. Here's Amaker answering right back. A wrinkle of his own. With a, with a pressing 11.47 remaining. First half, we're tied at 18. Barry thus far, the leading scorer in the game with four field goals for eight points. Here's Walter in the paint again. Smooth. Because Walter looks at press row, checks everything out. Make sure the lights are on. You know, it's amazing about Walter. He plays flashy, but off the court, he's not like that. Kind of a quiet guy. Well, this could be his year, no question about it. Ron Rowan early in shoot around. I'll get back to it in a second. Oh, a nice alley-oop. Billy King from Tommy Amaker. 
good look. Ron Rutledge was out on the floor with Ron Rowan. I said, I guess Rowan, as we take a look at this pretty play, defense all watching the basketball, King wisely pointing to the hole and the delivery. Good look. So the vision is perfect. We're tied at 20. Bad pass by Berry and saved by Jackson. Now Berry, who's had the good shooting touch thus far, mostly inside. Jackson, beautiful move by Mark Jackson. Berry with good defense, too. Jackson able to hold off. But I said to Ronnie Rutledge, I guess Rowan doesn't miss Mullen. He's getting all the shots now. He said he's the only one. <laughs> Everybody else does. Everybody at the school wonders if he's coming back ever. King shot rejected by Willie Glass. Good. We'll get substitutions coming into the game for Duke. Martin Nestle, a junior at 7-2, and David Henderson will return to the game for the Duke Blue Devils. St. John's in front by two. The big holiday is on its way, and so are big values during CarQuest. St. John's, the man with his back to you is Al Balbo, one of the assistant coaches of St. John's. He's a nice guy. Got a little tie-in with Mike Krzyzewski, too. Yeah, man. Up at the, Army. Is uh, Bill Raftery's illegitimate son. <laughs> <laughs> I can't deny it. <laughs> but you mentioned while we were away, not the kind of tempo St. John's would enjoy. Uh, I think it's going to be tough for Lou to control some of these young players. They like to go up and down. Duke, 10 of 16. St. John's, 9 of 14. Snyder is in the game. Quinn Snyder, a freshman from Mercer Island, Washington. Here's Perry. On the break. Jackson going past Snyder. Oh, power dribble. Pretty good move by Mark Jackson. He had Rowan on the wing. Chose to power up the lane. Pretty good use of the dribble and the hop, too. NBA hopper An advantage step. Baskets, basket's not going to count. Basket will not count. There was a foul on the play. Good good rehearsal. Not bad. Ron Rowan. Jackson looks pretty good early. Doesn't he run in this club? Yes, he does. Backed up Mike Moses last year. Jones with a fadeaway. I'm not sure he was happy with that shot selection. Kind of second, that is. Here's Johnny Dawkins. And Snyder in the backcourt. Henderson's back in the game. Nestler inside. Boy, he, Nestle rather, he takes up a whole lot of room. Henderson. Nestle with the follow. There's a whole lot of Redwoods in there. And Henderson missed it again. And Jones with the rebound. Shelton Jones over Nestle. Right now the show. Too quick. Barry with the follow. Could have called goaltending against Shelton Jones. I, I don't he, know. I think he took his hands away, though. Pretty good reaction. Reps had a good angle on it at the foul line there. But the shots are too fast for St. John's. They're getting away with it. 24-20, St. John's with 9-10 to play until halftime. Henderson looking to go inside. Snyder with the fake, trying to put it up baseline. Inside, Nestle. Good defense by Walter Berry. Jackson on the right side. On Snyder, and he banks it in. There's going to be a charge on Jackson. And if Mark Jackson had passed the basketball to Willie Glass, there wouldn't be any question. And Willie Glass, one of those fellas that wears his emotions, too. He gave the dirtiest look possible. There's Willie Glass waiting. Mark probably figured a bad angle, but in Willie's mind, it was selfish. He's not too happy. Nestle goes down again, sits down, the seven foot two center for Duke. And Mark Allery in your picture, number 32, back in the ball game. 26 20, St. John's. The sloughing defense has kept the ball away from the inside power game. Redmond with six unanswered points. As you look at Johnny Dawkins with the ball. Inside Allery, pretty power move to the basket. Fouled by John Hempel, who came out of the ball game for St. John's. The ball is bounced in there. Allery knew where the defense was. Terrific drop step. Right to the goal. King goes out, and Danny Ferry comes back into the ball game for Duke. Duke using a lot of people, maybe to try to wear St. John's down. Pretty much the same ones, though. And he'll only go about eight without Bilas there. But yes, I would agree that the uh, depth of Duke could become important in the latter stage of this ball game. 
Tommy Amaker comes back into the game as you look at Mark Allery. In the ACC tournament, as he misses the front end, in the ACC tournament last year against Maryland, Allery had 21 points on a 10 for 13 effort. Got hurt late in the game and only played about a minute against Georgia Tech and could not go any further. His hip really gave him trouble. Here's that one four set, man out of bounds, four across the foul line. 26 21, St. John's ahead of the pack, Jackson. Nice oh. move. Oh, beauty. It's a shame it didn't go to do a great move. Life is unfair. Should get a deuce for that move. Henderson. Oof. I don't know what he meant to do there. Uh, he was throwing it to himself, maybe. A harsh pass. Duke fortunate to get it back. Tommy Amaker holding up set play. We'll see what play number four is in the Duke repertoire. And obviously, it's to isolate Amaker. And Shelton Jones, with good hang time, gets the rebound. They're not able to punish the St. John's people. They're taking some fast shots and deep. Shelton Jones with six rebounds. Barry with a floater. Hempel had it knocked off his hands by Danny Ferry. As Steve Sharina gets ready to check into the game for St. John's, and Johnny Dawkins will come back in for the Duke Blue Devils. Right now, it is St. John's with a five-point lead. Magazine, magazine fifth by Sports Illustrated and fifth by Sporting News. I believe they're fifth or sixth now, depending on who you read. At this moment, Duke uh, 3-0 thus far. It's amazing without Jay Bilas, though. You're not as deep with one body. Boy. Can't have that proper rotation that you'd like. Well, Danny Ferry, who, as you see, Sharina has come into the game for St. John's, the sophomore from Woodside, New York, at 6'4", at guard. Mark Jackson getting a rest. And he'll lead it later on. Yes, he will. Played almost the entire two games as Amaker goes up with the running one hand of the basket will not count. And boy, do they go right at it, huh? <laughs> Amaker with Sharina figured, let me take him to the cleaners. Where Steve couldn't relax and get comfortable in the ball game. Mike Krzyzewski spent five years at Army, did a fine job at Army. And then Bob Knight suggested that Krzyzewski be the next head coach at Duke. He took his advice and it paid off. Dawkins with the turnaround. And Barry comes down with the rebound. I guess when Bob Knight talks like famous brokerage house, everybody listens. Well, he, he's got himself a great reputation. Of course, we all know the bad things he does. There's a lot of quality things he does, and he's a great basketball man. Well Ferry, fouled on the way up by Danny Ferry. Danny Ferry's dad, of course, is Bob Ferry, the general manager of the Washington Bullets. He's seen a few ball games in his lifetime, but if Walter Burry is let to roam and not be punished on the defense, he's going to have a field day. Duke, even though the guards can't penetrate, I believe have to go in deep, force Burry to get some fouls. I think that's really as essential a key as there is in St. John's season. How many games Walter can stay out of foul trouble? No question about his ability. He's a great basketball player. Burry played his junior college ball in San Jacinto Junior College. Walter with four rebounds in the game, can both ends with a two-shot foul. St. John's goes up with their biggest lead, seven points. 28-21, Redman. Full zone now. Dawkins, nothing but cotton. And a five-point St. John's lead. That's a 1-1-3 one, one, that there. It's really a 2-3 bet. St. John's, 11 of 20 from the floor. Duke, 11 of 24. Jones. Down the middle. Bad play. But Walter Berry gets fouled, and there's no foul. Thought it was a foul. What a, what a great play by it's Berry a and a walk. traveling violation. Right. But a great play oh, by oh, Berry. Hustle. Anytime you go down or up with the basketball, good call. But Shelton Jones again out of control here now. This is what Luke Conasek is concerned about. Here he should dish it off, stop, keep a pivot foot. He got away with that one, trying to slide. Walter with pretty good offensive rebound and a terrific block. You thought it was a foul? I did. Then again, I'm going to have a striped shirt on. Sharina goes in, and there's going to be a foul called on Sharina. He fouled Allery. Because I would go in every time down. Make St. John's go in and trap. That'll loosen it up for the outside people. Steve Sharina. Only a sophomore. Didn't get any playing time to speak of in the Big Apple Regional in Hartford. Played a little against Navy. 
less against West Virginia. The dish to Amaker and Dawkins. Amaker setting the pick. And Henderson now behind Berry's pick. David Henderson. Didn't know how much we get to see of him tonight. Sat out briefly. 28-25, St. John's. Sheldon Jones likes to dribble at basketball. He's certainly not shy. This is Hempel. The transfer from UMass. Shelton losing control and Amaker with the steal. One on one with Serena. Pulls up in the paint. Berry with the rebound. Rejected by Berry. And Rowan down the other way. The alley-oop inside, nobody there. Hempel saves it, but he stepped on the end line. And no communication there. Yeah. St. John's a little too fast. You saw the turnover by Shelton Jones. And down the other end, of course, Walter Burry with sensational timing. Burry here really lost control of the shot, but uh, Walter Burry up big. Once more. Allery, meanwhile. Gets Duke within one, 28-27. Duke with six unanswered points. We have 5.25 to play, first half. You know, so much for game plans. Mike Krzyzewski saying, get it inside, let's punish them. Kids come out and play their way. Forget about the game plan. Takes them a while to get adjusted to the flow. Barry gets away and puts up the floater. Walter Barry having a terrific first half. Barry with 16 points. 16 of St. John's 30. Us hitting the boards, a couple of black shots. Walter's having himself a career in the first half for most players. And Lou has him on Danny Furry. First to run around with a little bang inside, but pretty good matchup. Figuring they'd rather go to Allery than to Furry. So Lou Carnesecca now sends in the troops. Walter Berry goes out of the game. Willie Glass comes in. Shelton Jones goes out. Terry Bross comes in for the first time. Mark Jackson comes back into the game, and so does King for Billy King for Duke. King into the game and Ferry out. Amaker has it stolen by Mark Jackson. Jackson started a break. Smartly held up. 30-27 Redmond with 4.40 to play in the first half. Rowan, the good shooter, way off the mark, and Bross with the rebound right back up with it. And it's offensive foul on Terry Bross. Terry Brass figures, I got the rebound, I'm going to throw it up. That's my rule. But Ron Rowan, a good stationary shooter, really had his shot there. Not a guy that makes it on his own. Needs to bump or has to be free on the reverse of the basketball. Turnovers in the game. Duke with five, St. John's with seven. Terry Bross did a great job on David Robinson of Navy in the second half of Navy St. John's game last Friday. Dawkins, one-on-one -on -one with Rowan. And a traveling violation on Johnny Dawkins. Krzyzewski, the 38-year-old head coach at Duke. ACC Coach of the Year in 1984. Chris Peake had that with him, was up in Army with him also. Good pressure by Amaker in the backcourt. And good ball handling by Mark Jackson as well. Louie trying to steal minutes now with this group. Look for Duke to go to Allery on the other end, I would imagine. Willie Glass rejected by Allery, but Jackson puts it up and he is fouled. A two-shot foul coming up. Kevin Strickland checks into the game for Duke. Now St. John's been able to get the ball inside. Duke normally plays those passing lanes well. They could have given this to Allery or King. I'm not sure who they gave it to. But normally it's not that easy to get it into that three-second area against Duke. The thing that's surprising me is that St. John's with their leapers, Jones and Berry on the bench, trying to take the ball inside. Well, of course, Willie Glass, great leaper and quick. And, of course, Duke sometimes, like most teams, will relax when that second group is in there, don't position themselves properly. Mark Jackson, only a 62% free throw shooter this year. The plum bob. <laughs> a great putter. <laughs> Does it work? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> this is the second one in Allery with the easy rebound. 31-27 St. John's with 3.50 to play in the first half. Amaker all the way. What speed, huh? Oh, great first step. Turn the corner. 
Tommy Amaker with a reputation of being a good defensive player showing an excellent offensive move. Ross to Jackson, breaking the pressure. Inside to Hempel. Going to call a charge. That was going to be on Hempel, but the basket will count. I, I believe in wiping them out. You know, if you're going to call the charge, wipe the goal out. Hempel really squares up well. Transfer from Massachusetts. Pretty strong player. Good cheat step there to position himself. If you're going to call a charge, wipe it out. This keeps everybody happy. It's an official's way of saying I love you. <laughs> but I won't bring you home for dinner. <laughs> Hempel with a tight end body. 6'7", 225. Navy's got a, a forward also. Vernon Butler is built the same way. 6'7", about 230. Carnesecca is not really happy with that last foul. Well, Hempel, as the year goes on, I think he'll get more minutes. He's a yeah. pretty sound player. Of course, as he proves his worth, I'm sure Luke Carnesecca will play him more. Billy King, a sophomore from Sterling, Virginia. Expected to see a lot of action tonight. He misses the second one with the rebound of Strickland. Dawkins right away with the jump shot. What a nice. He is stroking it. First game this year, he struggled, but I think he's got great potential. St. John's lead is down to one, but their stars on the bench getting a breather. Karnaseka investing in the second half as Barry comes off the bench, getting ready to check back into the game. As we approach three minutes remaining in the first half, Howard David and Bill Raftery at Madison Square Garden with St. John's and Duke. St. John's for the first time using a little bit of the clock, something I thought they'd do with the starters on the bench. Nice Bell pass inside by Rowan, and a foul is going to be called a blocking foul on Billy King. As Walter Berry will come back into the ball game for St. John. Well, you love guys going without the basketball. John Heppel with a terrific cut here. Ron Rowan with a bailout pass. Go to the goal. Find the spot. Pretty good square up. Well, Heppel was going to be replaced by Walter Berry, so... Hempel now, as you look at Walter, sitting and getting ready to get check into the game for Hempel. Hempel to the line for two. He was the Atlantic 10 freshman of the year when he played at UMass. Now playing at St. John's. 34-32 St. John's. Redmond have led most of the way. Mike Krzyzewski earlier today at the shoe round said he was concerned about the tradition of St. John's. Interesting comment. He said they just know they are St. John's. They know they're capable of winning, and particularly here. The record at Madison Square Garden over the years has St. John's winning 68% of their games. Right now, they lead by three with 2.48 to play in the half. Obviously, with St. John's within 35 minutes of their campus to Madison Square Garden, as you look at the free throw statistics, St. John's has been in the line six more times. St. John's now nine of ten from the free throw line, while Duke is two of four. Started to say with St. John's campus so close to the garden, that's why there are a lot of St. John's rooters here. Good house tonight of about 13,000 plus. Of course, Ned Irish upstairs looking down. Usually the circus was here. He started it all right here at the Garden. Dawkins trying to free himself, and Rowan stayed right with him. Here's Strickland and Amaker. With 20 seconds left on the 45-second shot clock. Strickland looking to work it inside to Henderson in the alley-oop. He's going to be in all alone. Nice reverse spin. Mark Jackson with a heck of a read, but that's what Duke should be doing, and that's why they're not going to the foul line. They're not dumping it in, putting the pressure on St. John's. St. John's with the lead, 35-34. Backcourt should be 10. They beat the 10-second beat the violation. Not by the scoreboard. There's Jackson. Hamaka giving him a little room. Inside it goes to Willie Glass. And a foul is going to be called, I think, on Willie Glass. Well, St. John's doing a marvelous job getting it in deep, though. Willie Glass with his first personal foul. St. John's and Duke are both over the limit with seven fouls or more. Mike Krzyzewski and Luke Karnaseka. Krzyzewski said he was in awe of St. John's tradition. Duke's tradition in college basketball has not been all that shabby with the talents of... Of uh, Jeff Mullins, of an Artie Heyman, uh, the Jack Marin, 
Uh, there have been some great players. Uh, Mike Jaminski. Mike Jaminski. Jimmy Spinart. Yeah, Gene Banks. And how about Dick Groot? Dick Groot, not bad. I think uh, that's Johnny Dawkins' next step is to top Dick Groot in career scoring at Duke. He's right below him. We are tied at 35. And Duke has the lead for only the second time tonight. Marco Baldi's in the game for St. John's. The highly recruited Marco Baldi, 6'11", from Italy. Got to see him play up in Hartford, and he occupies a great deal of the lane when he spreads his arms out. Louis has to be careful, though, uh, when he says something suggestive in Italian. Marco will understand it. He's been getting away with it for years. <laughs> Marco, the man in the middle, wearing number 14. Glass, what leaping ability. Barry had it inside, and it was saved by Henderson. Minute 28 to play in the half. Duke in front by a point as Dawkins has it stripped by Ron Rowan. He had to come back with that left hand. Pretty good defense. Rowan knew he had to come back. Barry's been the big gun for St. John's in the first half with 16 points. 10 for Henderson to lead the Blue Devils to Duke. And Luke on the second couldn't ask for a better half, though. No foul problems. In control. Rested. Glass saw the seam and had it taken away. Henderson. Right side to Strickland for the jumper. And Barry with the uncontested rebound. 45 seconds remaining until halftime, and St. John's down by a point to Duke. Jackson in the paint. Good touch, and Bowley with the rebound. He's going to be called for a traveling violation. Pretty good rebound without fouling, though. Marco Baldi. Of course, he's at the outside position here on the missed jumper by Mark Jackson, and without pushing, that's pretty tough here. International rules, he may have gotten away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how they make those rules. 30 seconds remaining until halftime. I got to believe that Duke is going to set it up for one last shot before the end of the half. They lead by one. St. John's has led most of the way. Sorry. We've got to put Marco Baldi on uh, Billy Packer's hit list. Another foreigner playing over here. Ferner. Ferner. <laughs> I think Billy Packer's on a few people's hit list. Ten seconds remaining in the half. Amaker now with seven. The jumper is off the mark. And Barry with the rebound comes out of the pack with two with one. Shall not be a shot. At the half, Duke leading St. John's. 36 to 35. There's your leading score in the first half. Walter Barry with 16 points. We'll be back with our halftime festivities in just a moment. Teenth ranked St. John's Redmond, 36 to 35. First half, uh, very exciting, a lot of end-to-end -end action. And it was Walter Berry who had himself a big first half, Bill. Well, he was posting up, and they're delivering the pass. Nice wing entry pass, so uh, that's the kind of play they're looking for. Here, Willie Glass with the miss, but Shelton Jones, very active player, quick to the basketball. And the guy you've enjoyed all evening long, Walter Berry. This one's fumbled a little by Furry, but great timing. And this is what pushing the ball up the floor does for Duke. You can see the collapsing defense. Dawkins able to nail that long jumper. And I think a guy you're going to have to call more this half if Duke's going to win is Mark Allery. Here it's a defensive play where he gets up. Good timing and the block. And, of course, the eventual foul there by King. Second half coming your way. Should be as exciting as the first half, if not more so. The tempo's picked up quite a bit. It is Duke in front of St. John's at halftime, 36 to 35. We'll be back. You're looking live at the new Madison Square Garden that first began having events in the 60s. Prior to that, the old garden was a fantastic place for young people growing up in this area, which I was fortunate to be one. And when you went to Madison Square Garden to watch college basketball, it was king. It was something to behold for any event at the garden. St. John started playing basketball in the old garden in 1930, and there was no truth to the rumor that that's when Carter Secker was playing second base for the St. John's baseball team. First Frank McGuire in the stands happened to be his coach in those days. Frank McGuire, what a legend at North Carolina, South Carolina. He's the head of college basketball programs here at Madison Square Garden. 
He came up. And I was at Erasmus Hall, and Billy Cunningham went there. Uh, Frank McGuire was in our gym every day for a month, recruiting Billy to go to North Carolina in 1961. Not too many players said no to Uncle Frank. Uncle Frank did a pretty good job with the subway recruiting into Tobacco Road. Did a heck of a job. Of course, uh, a guy that came from New York area that went down to play at North Carolina will be coaching in the second game, Larry Brown, the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks against Kenny Crum of Louisville. Two outstanding teams. Henderson, first shot of the second half, and Duke goes up by three. A little more pressure now, extending the floor. Henderson now with 12 points in the ball game. Did not expect to see much of David Henderson. Did not play against William and Mary. Got tendonitis of that left knee, and he's in the ball game. St. John's runs that little bump and slides Walter Burry down. Shelton Jones on the dish to Willie Glass. In and out of the hole, but Burry. Oh, what a move. Try to get the foul, too. He got the basket. And Mark Gallery stayed his ground. Didn't go for the pump fake. And Burry able to extend that left hand. 18 points for Walter Berry. 38-37. Uh, Duke by a point. Danny Ferry on Berry. In and out of the hole. Henderson with the carom. All ball and part of the body. Glass and Jones and Barry surrounded Henderson. Right now you can see Danny Furry just struggling a little bit. He may have gotten away with a walk there. He needs a basket badly. Of course, when you're a freshman, you don't think it's ever going to come. David Henderson, known as the Blue Devils' sixth starter. Now they get it. They've been looking a little more for inside play. You saw the long jumper here. Furry, little bit of a struggle. He almost wished that basketball in. Willie Glass with the bump. Henderson played for his coach, Mike Krzyzewski, on the South team of the National Sports Festival and won a gold medal. Henderson makes them both, and once again, it's a three-point Duke lead. He opened with the jump shot, and Duke had a set for a low post play. I think you're going to see more of it. Rowan, timeout quickly. Does not late the timeout, and they, they violate the five-second rule, and so it'll be Duke's ball. Uh, that's one thing about a press. It gnaws away. You've got to, each time you inbound the ball, be certain and snap it to somebody who's free. Don't wait. Mistake there. Rowan was calling for a timeout, but four seconds had already elapsed. Ali the alley -oop. alley inside. This time St. John's ready for it. Mark Jackson now. A three on three. Jackson wants it by himself. A little short, and Henderson with a rebound. Here's Johnny Dawkins. Well, he's great with that left hand, same hand change, isn't he? Henderson wanted to shoot inside to Allery. Rebound, Ferry. Good intimidation by the Redmen. Loose ball, and it's Allery. Bounce the ball across from a basket. He's really forcing, isn't he? You love to just grab and say, relax, Danny. The heat's not on yet. When you get into ACC games, you want to talk about heat. That'll be pretty tough by then. Ferry, and there's a foul inside. Gonna go against St. John's, I believe. Shelton Jones got involved. The quick springing Shelton Jones. Jones with his first personal foul. Mike Krzyzewski, the head coach at Duke. One of the nice, quiet guy who coached at Army. Want to get involved in the wars in the ACC for her. He's pretty competitive up there, too. Yes, he was. Here's Perry. Henderson with the hop. with the hop. Henderson has all six Duke points in the second half. A five-point lead. Rowan may take it all the way in. Follow is missed. Jones wants to put it back up too hard. And there's a foul called. Shelton Jones is hitting it too hard. And Walter Berry is hurt. He's holding his, his knee. He's Ron Rowan, a little bit out of control here, forces the issue, and as you mentioned, after the miss, Shelton Jones, pretty good offensive rebound here. See what happened to Berry. He Ooh, pushed he just, out he of just, the way. He just went underneath the defender. Right now, Luke Karnaseka has to have his whole season right in his throat. They're looking high, fortunately. Walter Berry is out for any period of time. 
Lou said a quick prayer on the way over there, no question. Picked up a few statues on the way over to watch Walter. Walter uh, doesn't appear to be too serious. I think you'll see him back in his game. He'll be all right. They'll take him out to save the timeout. Yep. And they are going to call a timeout. St. John's charged with a timeout with 17.49 remaining. Second half, Duke with a five-point lead, 42-37. All six points for Duke here on the second half have been recorded by David Henderson. Well, they need somebody to spark them. You, know, you mentioned Jay Bilas not playing, and of course they're going to Danny Farine. He's getting the basketball in good position, but now he's sort of hoping that the shots will go in. He's not asserting himself the way you'll see him in a couple of months. Well, if Duke gets into the ECC wars and St. John's into the Big East wars. Depth is such a valuable asset. The one, one problem that Carter Seca has, by his own admission, is his lack of depth. Of course, the ACC probably is a backup mascot. <laughs> Things are so deep. But here's the penetration again by Rowan. And eventually you'll see Shelton with the rebound. Furry just sort of follows the play. And down underneath, I believe it's Danny Furry who ends up falling. Here's Dawkins. And then Allery pushes Berry from behind. He falls over Dawkins. Whoa. Oh, the pain. I'm not sure who's hurting more in that play, Walter or Karnaseka. Walter still struggling as he comes out of the timeout, saying he's all right, shaking his head. I'm amazed he's still in the ball game. I thought maybe he'd just take a breather, but yeah, let's get it moving. Keep it moving, kid. 42-37, Duke. We have 17.45 remaining. In the second half, Shelton Jones from the line. As you look at Walter Berry, who's remained in the ball game. Steve Grad went over to the St. John's bench to check out the condition or the status of Barry, but Barry's still in the ball game. 42-39, Duke. Amaker and Dawkins in the backcourt. Henderson, Allery, and Ferry up front. This is Allery. He's been silent most of the night. and stripped away by St. John's Jackson. Barry now with the ball for the Redmond, and he leaves it. <laughs> Jackson. A little showtime. Walter wants to let everybody know he can play guard as well. Here's Glass. Jackson. Berry. Triple teamed at the baseline. He still puts it up and hits it. The fumble, the fumble actually helped him. 42-41 Duke with 17 minutes remaining in the ball game. Allery lost the ball the last time down. He had Furry in the low post. Here's Allery, trying to fake Jones. Pretty move by Allery in his own follow. Allery, who added seven points at halftime on three for three shooting. Now with nine points in the game. 44-41, Duke. Here's Willie Glass. Takes it to basket, will not count. As I don't know about this one. Danny Furry over late. Willie Glass with a strong move to the basket. Walter Burry had posted up. Shelton Jones in the other box. That's one of those nickel dimes. Let it go. Little McCrory special. That's all. Five and dime. 16 and a half to play in regulation. And Duke up by three. The biggest lead is in five. St. John's is led by as many as seven. No double for Dawkins. Dawkins over Rowan. Allery has his ball taken away by Shelton Jones. Shelton hasn't been checking Allery out. He's got to put a body on him. He can't rely on his jumping ability. Rowan inside to Berry. Not wasting any time. Now, Rowan gets an assist, but that's unselfish. Bang it home when that man posts up. 22 points for Walter Berry. Allery behind the screen. Last touch by Berry. 44-43 Duke with 15-48 remaining in the second half. It has been an up-tempo battle all the way. And the Devil, Blue Devils lead by a point. All right, here you take a look at what's going to happen to Duke and St. John's when they get into league war. Look at this. 
Well, at the math of this never happened. They had tearaway jerseys. <laughs> Morgan Wooten wouldn't stand for it. But uh, a little indoctrination for Danny Furry. Anything for that loose ball. 44-43 Blue Devils with 15-48 to play in the second half. And the Redmond crowd, which outnumbered the Blue Devil crowd, starting to get more into the game. Allery and a foul away from the play. David Henderson is going to be called for a personal And this foul. is a terrific call because he initiated in his post up the body. Seldom do you see that call. I mean, if I were Mike Krzyzewski, I'd be very upset, but it was a good call. But Luke Karnasekka was upset. St. John's winning his coach. Mike Krzyzewski visibly sedate. <laughs> well, he'll get into it. A little 2-3 zone now by Duke. Traditionally, St. John's has been more patient and has struggled against zones. One point, Duke lead. They've gone to Walter when they've needed it. And Jones puts it up and there's a foul. By on Perry, Duke. I believe. By uh, Danny Ferry. Commits the personal foul. For Ferry, that is his third. And that bailed St. John's out. That was a bad shot by Shelton Jones. Quick. Billy King comes into the ball game for Duke, the sophomore, replacing freshman Danny Ferry. There's Billy King. Billy King in the first half, he played pretty well, had five points, although he was only two of six, but he was very aggressive, played very well. You know what's crazy about this game? David Henderson tried to post up, had the foul called on him. I would bet your salary that if he posted up again, it wouldn't be called against him. He banged Willie Glass the same way. You have no worries about betting my salary. St. John's in front, 45-44. Barry with 22 points, leading all scorers. Henderson has 16 for Duke. The inside screen. Sloughing off has been a problem. St. John's has been able to take away that post pass. Allery, long range. And a ringer. 46-45, Duke reacquires the lead with 15 minutes to play in the second half. You said at the beginning of this half that Allery had to get more involved in the offense. Apparently he's taking your tip. Yeah, he's forcing the issue a little bit on occasion, but we like that from your leader. And he's playing in the middle of that 2-1-2. They don't really have a legitimate center in the game for either team. St. John's big people are a little quicker, though, I think. Yeah. If that Makes up for height some evenings. Here's Willie Glass outside Jackson. Now Rowan with 12 on the shot clock. Jackson looks up at the shot clock, sees eight, now fires the jump shot. It does not go, and Henderson with a rebound. It take all that time to work the ball, and don't come away with any with a long jumper. Henderson over Glass. Usually it's under Glass. Here's Jackson again in transition. Got to bail him out. 14 minutes remaining. Second half at Madison Square Garden. Duke leading St. John's 46-45. Willie Glass around Henderson. Good hang time on the jump. The tip by Rowan doesn't go, but the tip by Barry does. Well, they had three people on the glass. I think Willie Glass kept it alive, though. 47-46 St. John's. Barry with 24 points. And a foul, I believe, on Ron Rowan. As Kevin Strickland comes into the ball game. Now St. John's a little more active with that quickness to the ball. The miss there by Glass. This is kept alive, I believe, by Shelton Jones. Jones. That's who it was. And of course, Walter Berry around to pick up the crumbs. St. John's with five team fouls. Duke with three, with 13.35 remaining. Second half. Allery in the paint. In your face by Berry. What a block. Look at him. Palm the ball. Could have caught it. Yeah. So will Chamberlain do that? Danny Ferry gets ready to check into the game for the Blue Devils. Redmond lead it by one. Over Duke. Now, believe it or not, the zone, Luke on a second, is probably happy because it's slowing his team down. But I mean, he hasn't enjoyed the tempo all evening, I'm sure. Well, we talked about depth or lack thereof. St. John's would like to have it just a little slower. Jackson with eight seconds on the shot clock. Doesn't go, but the tip by Willie Glass doesn't count. I don't think 
that that is a good call. Well, it's the first time I looked at it. Look I don't know at it why again. it's bad. It's the official way out by half court. That's the concern. The foul line official's right on top of it, and it's off the cylinder. Oh, no. That's a bad call. Ooh. Louie up and at him. Watch him stop at the hash mark there. Great self-control. He's coming off his best record in St. John's history, 31 and 4. Louis' first trip to the Final Four. St. John's by one. Amaker gives Duke the lead, 48-47. Now Dawkins off the penetration. Let Tommy Amaker step in. I'd love to see Duke pound it in. They've got to take it. Get to the foul line at least. This is Jackson inside. Shelton Jones on the turnaround, and it's short. Dawkins with the rebound. Jones with the reacquire. And it is Duke's ball. First down somewhere, gentlemen. Here's Dawkins. <laughs> and this is preseason. Where we get in the lead? Strickland off the mark. And Jones with the rebound. The tempo is up, and the crowd is as well. Throwing inside the Berry. Triple team still puts it up. It counts. A foul is gone. St. John's is the one that's really trying to jam it in. I thought Rowan made a bad pass here because of the traffic involved. But Walter Berry able to turn. Actually switches pivot feet and got away, got away with it. Dawkins down with the grab. Opposite of our thinking going into the game. Walter Berry putting on a clinic. 26 points in the game for this junior. 49-48 Redmond. Tell you, the, the St. John's kids are aware of who their horse is. They're going right at him. 27 points for Mr. Walter Berry. A young man from the Bronx, New York. He's just a junior, and Karnaseka says his prayers every night that he's got him for another year. This is leading Duke 50 to 48, and this is the guy that's keeping St. John's in the ball game. He has 27 points. Uh, Walter Burry figures if Patrick Ewing can wear a t-shirt, I'm going to give it a run. Of course, the building is cold here with the ice down. Burry is 12 of 15 from the floor, 5 of 5 in the second half. 11.50 remaining, second half. Duke and St. John's in the semifinals of the inaugural Big Apple Classic. Second game, Kansas and Louisville, and there's a traveling violation on Johnny Dawkins. Well, Mike, I didn't move my foot. Mike Krzyzewski upset. I don't think he did either. He popped out of the stack. His right foot was his pivot foot. Bury those whistles. Take the peas out. Let him play. <laughs> Once a coach, always a coach. Oh. Referee is always the enemy. Let the kids call him. Like the old days in the schoolyard. Slap on the hand, I got it. Go into the basket and take it out again. Hempel is in the game for St. John's. Willie Glass getting a breather. Hempel the transfer from the University of Massachusetts. St. John's using the clock a little bit more. Ferry wants to take it to Ferry. Hempel now inside to Walter. They work it to Jackson with six on the shot clock. His shot is short, and it's Amaker with the rebound. They got two on two. Amaker all the way down the floor. Air ball is picked off by Shelton Jones. Here comes the Redmond down the other way. Mark Jackson in the paint. Puts up the lofty shot. It doesn't go, and King with the rebound. Bad shot. You've got to have your guards penetrating. If you don't see anything, fans dribble. King had a lot of room to shoot. Passed up the shot. Sure, we kind of second would like to have seen that ball yanked out by his point guard, Mark Jackson. Shelton Jones with 10 rebounds. Barry with nine inside and a foul on Shelton Jones, reaching over the top of Billy King. Now, that's the set they ran before when they called the post-up foul on David Henderson. I think if Duke goes to that and empties out the help side, they can't slough off as much. They can penetrate it down in. David Henderson comes back into the game. So does Mark Allery for the Duke Blue Devils. Strickland sits down, King sits down. Duke going with their starting five. Dawkins and Amaker at the guards, Henderson, Ferry, and Allery across the front. Allery to trigger the inbound. And a five-second violation against Duke. I'll tell you what, that was a, an awful quick four. Put the stopwatch on that, baby. St. John's leading Duke by two. 
with ten and a half to play in the ball game. First thing about making rules, occasionally refs like to show you they know them. You know what you do? I think you, you blame our industry sometimes. It wasn't for television, you wonder how many less whistles there'd be. Hempo with the jumper. John Hempel gives St. John's a four-point lead. They led once by as many as seven. Duke's biggest lead has been five. I'd love to see Danny Perry get involved now. Perry and Perry are mixing it up underneath in some shoving match. And a whistle and a foul against Mark Allery away from the ball. Mark Allery committing his second personal foul. A furry made a slide across the lane. Walter Burry guarding him. And as he cleared, this is a real strong post-up by a freshman. Looking for the basketball, good hold-off, spin, reverse, and the foul eventually as he doesn't get the ball. Mark, look at the post, strong, just didn't get the ball. And you can see no help on either side. Eventually, Larry, or Allery burst through. They called an offensive foul on him. Good isolation by our crew. Danny Perry doing his best impression of Hulk Hogan. Ten minutes remaining in the second half. Duke and St. John's second game will find Kansas and Louisville in a barn burner. Both teams ranked in the top seven in America. This Duke team ranked fifth from the nation. Speaks well for the tournament, the Big Apple Classic in its inaugural season with three of the top ten rated basketball teams in the nation here. And St. John's ranked 18th, four of the top 20. Pete Carlissimo, Jack Kaiser, and the guys of the NIT committee have done a whale of a job putting this tournament together. Chris, you wouldn't mind this group at the end of the year, would you? No. <laughs> but I, I, one thing I've noticed with Duke now, they seem to be posting up aggressively. And if that has had been done all ball game, I think you would have seen them on the foul line, able to get the easier shot. So with 10 to go, you might see them pounding it in deep. For Duke, who trail by four. They have their starting five on the floor, Ferry and Allery, Henderson, Dawkins, and Amaker. And that's not all Duke has. They have shown some depth on their bench, and this is without Jay Bilas, their real starting center. As you get a look at Luke Carter second. Mike Krzyzewski giving an earful right now to the officials, and I don't blame him. Rowan will trigger the inbound and does to Jackson. Duke with the pressure, supplied by Amaker. Karnaseka said, when asked about how he's going to survive this year without Chris Mullen, he said he expects him to drop through the ceiling to rescue us one night. <laughs> Chris is busy on the coast. A five-second violation against St. John's. No penetration in that five-second period. On the turnover, it'll be Duke Ball. Good pressure on the defensive end now. Chris, in that timeout, I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski put some pressure defensively. Let's really take it to them. Dawkins has been noticeably silent in the second half, shooting the basketball. Mallory has been more involved this half. Well, Duke hasn't been able to reverse the ball to the postman. Here's Dawkins as I speak. It almost goes, and he's fouled on the way up. Johnny Dawkins, what an outstanding talent this guard is. Only returning consensus All-America in the United States. Now you mentioned the great first step. Look at off the dribble, able to set the man up. Rowan Lee, one way to hand contact. But look, he's by his man into the thick of things, and that could help too. Dawkins had eight points in the first half. He has yet to score until this moment here in the second half. The St. John's plays great tag defense where they sort of touch in and fall back on that post guy, and it's been a problem for Duke. Dawkins, the lefty shooter, cans them both and brings the Blue Devils within two. 52-50, St. John's in front with 9.25 to play in regulation. Another turnover, turnover created by the Duke pressure and Dawkins is free. We are even at 52. Pretty explosive. It's amazing how many things happen on the defensive end to get you going. In 34 seconds time, St. John's four-point lead is now nothing. They got Jackson telling everybody to go up the floor. I'll bring it across. St. John's barely beats the time clock, the 10-second clock. Here's Berry. Ball goes off Berry's shoe, and it's Duke on the turnover. The tide has shifted. It's all blue now. What a move. Overdrive. He put that one off the third and fourth gear all the way down. Johnny Dawkins. And everybody knew the left hand, the explosiveness now. Little hesitation. Rock him to sleep, Johnny. Boom, boom, head and shoulder fake. Great ball by. Ooh. 
He can play. And a soft kiss. Tommy Amaker commits the foul. So it'll give Duke 16 fouls. St. John's is over the limit. The lead to Jackson. Has Barry ahead of the field. He's fouled. He puts it up. The basket. Will it count? I believe it will. I don't know if they're going to... I think they're giving him the two shot. They are yes. scoring a goal. Ooh. I thought the intentional foul caused him to walk and then the basket. Yes. I don't know about the basket because I thought it was up. Of course, in the pros, the continuation is okay. In the well, college game, it's not. This is not the NBA. Good pass here, Mark Jackson. And, of course, Walter Berry now the giveaway by David Henderson. Now, watch the feet. There's the he foul. He actually walks before the shot. Yes. Should be two shots. That's all. That's it. St. John's gets a break. 55-54, St. John's on the three-point play by Walter Berry. Eight and a half to play in regulation. Here's Dawkins. He's taking control in the late stages of the ball game. Anderson shuffled the feet. It'll be called for the traveling violation. You know, all that dribbling that time, Mark Gallery was in the low post, had his man on his back, and didn't touch the ball. Sometimes guards like to pound you out of a game. Behind, you can see one of the assistant coaches for Duke, Bob Bender. Interesting story about Bob Bender. If we get a moment, I'd like to relay it to you. Here's a foul on Danny Ferry. That is his fourth. Bob Bender, who's an assistant coach for Mike Krzyzewski at Duke, played for Bob Knight's 76 Indiana National Championship team. And then he transferred to Duke and played in the 78 championship game for the Blue Devils, only man in the history of college basketball to play in two title games for different schools. Yeah. You are right on top of it. That 76 Indiana team was pretty good. May. It was May and Buckner and Benson and Wilkinson. Abernathy. And the 78 Duke team had Jaminski, Shelton Jones with 10 points in the game. He's seven for seven at the free throw line is Shelton Jones. To finish G-Man, of course, Jaminski, Spinarco, Gene Banks. Not a bad crew. Bender played with a few good ones. Second shot breaks. Shelton Jones a string of seven of eight from the line. Now he's seven of eight. Came into the game only a 65% free throw shooter. Interested observer across the way is Denny Crum, the head coach at Louisville. Dawkins with the step and the jumper. He waited for the postman, didn't show, took over himself. 7.55 remaining in regulation. We are tied at 56. He knew it was going to be close, and you can't get closer than this. Good rag by Amaker. Amaker giving Jackson all he wants. Here's Walter Berry. Calling for the ball back is Berry. Hempo and Rowan. Rowan's been silent. Doesn't get the roll. The tip is missed by Shelton Jones. Last touch by David Henderson. A Duke going to be St. John's ball. We have 7.28 remaining in regulation time in the second half. It has been a wild one. At halftime, St. John's trail Duke by one. They're now even. On the next Check It Out, Howard has a delectable mystery on his hands. What you've got is $2,400 worth of gourd. Now you know where the term Little Devil came from. There it is. Little Devil. Little Blue Devil. And here's the Louisville Cardinal. Warming up. One of the St. Louis Cardinals won the Rookie of the Year Award, Vince Coleman, yesterday. 7.28 to play in regulation. We're tied at 56. Here's a steal by Johnny Dawkins. He's got Jackson to beat. What hang time. Hamaker gets the rebound. Oh, and down to the foul. He got hurt, so. Hamaker, what a play. The speed of the two guards, the steal, and then following Dawkins down the floor. What speed can do? Hopefully, Amick will be all right. He's walking it off. Does a 360 on the follow. Dawkins with a pretty good hang here. Doesn't have enough oomph, not enough legs to make that one in here. Look at the speed. Amick actually coming in a little bit late. The spin correctly off the glass. Tommy Amaker. Between his freshman and his sophomore years, he worked for Oregon Senator Mark Hatfield in the Senate Appropriations Committee. 
right there. He appropriated himself a three-point play. He's hurting a little bit, though. 59-56, Duke with 7-18 remaining in regulation. And they've got him as the uh, center fielder in the press. Here's a two-on-one break. Jackson Berry puts it up. It doesn't go. Berry with his own rebound. Berry on the turnaround. It doesn't go. It's last touched by Allery. It'll be St. John's ball. St. John's had a, an easy basket there. I'm not sure that Barry should have gone right up with it. Well, I'll tell you, I think he walked on the first shot. I'm getting crazy. He's been moving his pivot feet and actually caused him to miss it. Duke with the man-to-man -man now trying to go after it. Barry has 30 points in the game to lead everybody. Duke just switched the inside. How are you? I'm Murray now. Here's Willie Glass who's come back into the ballgame. Inside hip is stolen by Henderson. Restolen by Glass. Quick hand by Willie Glass. St. John's a little sloppy right now. Pretty good jump switch by Mark Allery. Big guys aren't supposed to do that. Jackson. Too hard. Barry with the rebound. Puts it up. He's fouled. And the basket counts. And a reverse, Howard. But he turned completely around. He shot up amongst the Duke defenders. Great elevation and speed up to the basket here. He actually turns his back to the basket. Watch how quick he gets up. The only hand you'll see, how he reverses, that's knowing where you are. <laughs> Walter Berry has 32 points as Shelton Jones checks back into the game. Both teams are in the one and one Hempel goes out. Hempel did a nice job. And this is really court knowledge, savvy, whatever you want to call it. But look how quick he gets up. There's the individual ability. And now the delivery, a death touch from behind. Misses the free throw. So Duke maintains a one-point lead. 59-58 with 6.25 to play. In regulation, the foul away from the play. It is going to be called on Shelton Jones. Shelton Jones with three personal fouls. Each team over the limit. Then send Mark Allery to the line one and one. The Italian leprechaun. I didn't know there was such a thing as an Italian leprechaun, but everybody calls Louis the Italian leprechaun. What a career. When you consider the man is the winningest coach in St. John's history, when you've had the likes of Joe Lapchick and Frank McGuire at St. John's, that's quite a feat. Well, Frank wasn't there as long. But he took his show on the road. Took it down a tobacco road. But uh, this club this year is shocking to Louie in the sense that he didn't know what to expect. They're not deep, and it has to play his guards long periods of time. If they don't handle the press, that could be telling tonight as well as the rest of the year. Mike Krzyzewski's team in front by three. 61-58 with 6-19 remaining in the second half. Ball knocked out of bounds by Amaker. Amaker with those quick hands. Now, this is tougher now because Rowan can't move. Tougher to get the basketball in. He's got a lack of pivot foot. Rowan signaling Barry to take a long run. That was obviously a ploy. Knocked away by Henderson. It'll be again inbounded by Ron Rowan. But David Henderson was not ready and then made up for it. Rowan, again, having problems inbounding. Gets it to, to uh, Willie Glass. Rowan and now Jackson with the ball. Hey, if Duke can score, they can really put some pressure on St. John's on the inbounds. Inside pass to Berry. Hang time. Doesn't quite get it. Underneath, it's Glass. Basket will not. Oh, yes, it will count. Willie Glass. Oh, the action under the basket is vintage March, and it's only December or late November. Well, there isn't much question as to where St. John's is going with it. They're going to their horse, Walter Burry. I thought he got away with a ward off here on this shot. Watch his free arm as he goes up. You'll see the right arm extend into Allery. See the push off? Then the shot, of course, Willie in the right place. We are tied at 61 with 6.01 remaining in regulation. Willie Glass's uncle, which confirmed by Willie before the game, told him the best thing to do is shoot baskets outdoors in the dark. It'll develop your shooting eye better. We don't know if it worked or not, but that time it did. Dawkins, followed by Allery, will not count. Allery may be caught for the foul over the top. Started to relay that story. I had read someplace where Willie Glass's uncle said the only way to develop your shooting eye the best way is go outdoors in the dark and shoot at the rim. It'll develop you a sense of focusing on the rim. And he, and he confirmed it before the game. First Mark Allen with the over the top. Dawkins' legs went out from under him. 
And boy, pretty clean looking rebound there, too. Is that number four? That's four on Allery. Ferry comes back in the game. He also has four fouls. And Walter Berry will go to the free throw line, one and one. We are tied at 61 with 544 to play in regulation. Berry with 32 points in the game. Incidentally, you can tell Willie Glass's uncle that they put the lights on when the game starts. It's probably one of the reasons why Willie's shooting needed to be improved. <laughs> Probably got the keys to the gym from Chris Mullen. He left them. Oh, no! You missed! Followed by Jones. Almost goes in. It's Glass underneath, and he's fouled all the way up by David Henderson. Might give that one to Dawkins, but aggressive pursuit of the basketball on the offensive end, particularly by St. John's. Johnny Dawkins commits the personal foul. Good call, Coach. See, coaches have a good eye for seeing the fouls, sometimes even when they're not there. Uh, when they're against you, you don't like to see them. Willie Glass to the free throw line. He'll have a two-shot opportunity here. This time with the lights on. Willie not a very good free throw shooter over the years. Down to 43% coming into this game. Not a bad looking stroke that time. He makes them both. The proclaimed Michael Jordan of St. John's as he likes to be called every now and again. Probably for his leaping ability. Really known for his humility. Yeah. 64-61 <laughs> oh. St. John's with five and a half to play in regulation. The good players want the ball on the hand when the chips are on the table. Ferry with the move on Barry, rejected One. by Walker, and tipped in by, I believe it was Billy King. I think you're right. Oh. Boy, that is very hard to do. That breaks the St. John's string of six unanswered points. It's now 64-63 Redmond with 5.05 remaining in regulation. Jackson cross court to Glass. Good help out by Billy King on Walter Burry before. Here's Burry on the dish to Glass and a foul inside on David Henderson or King. King. King commits the foul as third. But here's the foul situation. Allery and Ferry with four apiece. Henderson has three. Dawkins has three. Mark Allery comes back into the ball game. There he is, number 32 for Duke. 13 points in the game for Allery, but he has four fouls. And Ferry on the line. One and a one. So he's been posting up beautifully. And I, and I must commend, see the free throw shooting there by Walter Burry. The passers of St. John's getting the ball to him when he's free. John is missed by Burry, and now Duke can reclaim the lead. They trail by one with 4.51 remaining in regulation. Amaker blocked by Jackson. Tough move by Tommy Amaker. Had some traffic on that left side. Had to come back with the right hand into Mark Jackson. Here's Amaker. Allery with room. 65-64, Duke with 4.38 remaining. Inbounds comes to Jackson. Duke not showing a lot of pressure. Amaker with token pressure to Rowan. Rowan has been silent offensively for St. John's. Rowan with four points in the game. Shelton Jones on the dish to Rowan. Strong move to the basket. Offensive foul is going to be called on Ron Rowan. Of course, that's away from us, but a pretty good dish off by Jones to Rowan. And Danny Ferry, who picked one up before, able to position himself, number three, on Ron Rowan. Karnaseka calling for the basket to count. He didn't dispute the first the uh, charge. Well, that's that appeasement call that we saw earlier. Okay, I'll give you this one, give me that one. <laughs> 65-64, Duke with 4.08 remaining. Inside to Ferry, over Berry, doesn't go. Allery crashes the board. It doesn't go. King with the follow. It doesn't go. And finally, the whistle holds play. It's going to be called on Ron Rowan. I was wondering if the whistle would blow. There were more bodies being thrown up in there than you'd see in a meat house. I love to see that, though, that action underneath. Duke banging the glass right now on their end. Rowan with his fourth personal foul. A lot of keeping it alive here. Danny Ferry, who's been struggling. Great rebound by Mark Allery. The fadeaway, nothing. But just good pursuit right here. Duke with four people underneath. 
Dawkins, an excellent free throw shooter, gives Duke a two-point lead, 66-64, with 3.56 remaining. And a timeout is called for with 3.58 remaining in regulation time. The Duke Blue Devils, the fifth-ranked team of the nation, leading St. John's by three. Second half of the doubleheader will have Louisville and Kansas with the winner of that game playing the winner of this game on Sunday night. St. John's and Duke right now, and it's the Blue Devils on top. 67-64, there's your time remaining. 3.56 to go in regulation. It'll be St. John's ball from underneath the Duke basket. What do you think Karnasek might have said to his troops right now? They're down three, and they're having problems bringing the ball up the floor against Duke. Uh, they've run that 1-4, four, four across the foul line, and they've done it over the years, and it, it's tough to get it in some nights, particularly when people are prepared for it. And they, have, they struggle beating the timeline, too. Jackson off the Rowan inbound. He's going to bring it up against Amaker. That's a full-time job. Jackson Jackson, as he likes to be called. The man at the point this year for St. John's. Good time. Back door to Willie Glass. No goaltending at all. I don't think there was goaltending, but I'll tell you what, that was awfully close, though. St. John's now down three. Duke with the ball, and you know they're going to burn some clock. I'm sure they will. They're getting back. Good post up. They missed it all night. They got it that time. So much for my theory of burning off some clock. Five-point Duke lead. That's the one play that's been effective. Let's see if this one's a good cut and a good pass here. Willie with it. Ah, it's Ooh. goaltending. Sure. Goaltending. On its way down after it hit the glass. Jackson with the floater. 69-66. Duke with 2.55 remaining in regulation. Now they're going to use some clock. I see the continuity sign. 45-second shot clock. Here's Amica trying to go on Jackson. This is a 2-1-2. little bit of a delay. You'll see them run their set probably with 10 left. Got to look for either Dawkins or Allery, I would think, to be the man to take the shot. We have 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Inside pass to Allery. Rejected by Berry. What a block. At Berry's fourth block shot. Action Jackson wants it all himself. He puts it up. Gets the roll. 69-68 Duke. With 2.09 remaining in regulation, and Duke calls for a timeout. Mark Jackson taking control of the game. Great ball handling, huh? Woo! Weaving his way down the floor. Jackson came into the game, not one of the big offensive producers for St. John's. He has nine in the game now. He scored 12 in each contest up in Hartford against Navy and West Virginia. But he's taking control of the game. He wants the ball, and you got to admire that. Well, you know, the rest of the first half, I'm sure, helped them a little bit. Yeah. They first watching the flow of the game plus the stamina factor. And Duke now able to get the basketball so low and in great spots. Terrific block by Walter Perry, but you might look for Duke, do the same thing, run it down. If they're going to give up that low post shot, I'm sure Duke's going to take it. Some of the Duke players have some foul problems. Allery comes to mind. Danny Ferry comes to mind, each with four. For St. John's, I believe it's just Rowan who has four fouls. There's your foul problems, Ferry, Allery, and Dawkins, each with four personals. I only showed Dawkins with three. We'll have to check that. Rowan has four personals. Jones and Glass with three. Not really in trouble right now. 2.07 remaining in regulation time. Duke's lead is one, 69-68, and it's blue double ball. Now, if Duke should score, remember we said St. John's likes to put the four across. You asked me what Luke Conaseca was saying in the huddle earlier. He says to the inbounder, look, you'll see a man, you must get the ball to the first man free. Don't hesitate because we're going to get a violation where the defense will top him. A lot of people wonder why Kardasek is not wearing a sweater this year. He said he's giving it up. This year he might wear an overcoat. <laughs> Less than two minutes remaining in regulation. Duke by one. They want to go inside the Dawkins, being fronted by Rowan. Amaker now isolated on Jackson. Boy, Allery all along. 
A little bit late. Jackson got the tip on it, and it is a steal by St. John's. With a minute and 40 to play in regulation. Redmen ball, they're down one. Tommy Amaker put that ball over his head. He telegraphed the pass. They want to go to Barry in the paint, and it's Henderson who gets called for the foul. Henderson with his fourth foul. What a strong post up. And once again, a beautiful pass to the post. Oof. Henderson commits his fourth and Walter Berry to the free throw line for a one on one opportunity. He's missed his last two free throws after making seven of his first eight. Berry, the leading scorer in the game with 33 points. He missed the free throw, and it's St. John's still down one with a minute and 28 to play. Amaker patiently bringing it up the floor. Ferry has come way out, bringing Barry with him. Steal almost created by Jackson. Loose ball. St. John's has it. Wild. It is Jackson that's having a night. They want to go to Barry inside. St. John's now patiently looking up at the clock. There's 31 seconds remaining on the shot clock. 53 in the regulation time of the second half. Duke up by a point, 69-68. Willie Glass. Jackson with 15 on the shot clock. Barry at the free throw line. Takes it in the paint. Puts up the floater and it goes. Well, he took Danny Ferry. Quick timeout by Duke. Great individual play by Walter Burry. The lean, the hang, and going right back with his left hand into Danny Furry. 35 points for Walter Berry and the Redmond crowd getting into midseason form early on. The Duke Blue Devils ranked fifth in the nation. Trailing St. John's ranked 18th, 70 to 69. The 45-second shot clock is off with 34 seconds to go in the ball game. Now, of course, everybody has their own point of view. A lot of coaches lately have held for the last shot, being behind. I'm not a proponent of that. I enjoy going for a good one within a reasonable amount of time for a tip or a steal or a chance to get the basketball back for another opportunity. Mike Krzyzewski, if my memory serves me, likes to do that. We'll see if the Southern Air has changed his thinking. Here's your timeouts remaining. St. John's with two, Duke with one. Duke has brought a tremendous amount of people up from the Raleigh-Durham area to root their team on. A long way up from Raleigh. Now, St. John's mostly man-to-man. -man. Occasionally on an inbounds, we'll go 1-3-1. I look for him to go man-to-man, -man, though. Straight, normal, St. John's man-to-man. Duke's ball underneath the St. John's basket. Redmond not putting any pressure on the ball at all. Which Dawkins and Amaker, who many people feel, are the best guard tandem in college basketball. They're a little bit too quick to put that kind of pressure on them. We may see another pair in the second half, second game tonight. Walls and Wagner of Louisville. Popped out by the guards. Here's Dawkins, guarded by Rowan. Puts up the jumper. Oh! Puts it with 20 seconds to go. And St. John's calls timeout. Big time goal right in Ron Rowan's forehead. Johnny Dawkins is the man that you want to have the ball. He's a great shooter. You know what he did well, Howard, there? They were running in baseline. He saw Ron Rowan cheat to the baseline. He popped up the lane. And the tough thing for a guard is to put the ball back in a man's face, usually like the protection of the offhand. You got to put it right in Rowan's face. Johnny Dawkins with 20 points in the game. Walter Berry leads everybody with 35 points. But Dawkins, when the chips were on the table and ready to be counted, came in and put his bet down and made the bucket to put the Duke Blue Devils in front by one. And a look at it now. Pretty heads-up play. Dawkins running the baseline and trying to free himself up the lane. They have the stack low. He's going off the far side. It's taken away. See Rowan over the top, pop up, and now he leads right back in with the left hand into Ron Rowan. Great defense negated by sensational shooting. The Louisville Cardinal is waiting for his team to come out onto the floor. They'll be in the second game against the Jayhawks of Kansas. 
Now, you might look for Duke to try and double up on Walter Berry low. St. John's first has to get the basketball in. They've had their problems inbounding it. And I'm sure St. John's going to look in tight and have to settle if they can't get it. Seventy-one, seventy. Duke leading St. John's with 19 seconds to go in the ball game. We welcome the stations in Louisville, WDRB, and KSAS in Wichita. Late stages of this first game with eight seconds. Jackson in the lane, puts up the jumper. It doesn't go. Henderson with the rebound with two with one, and that's all she wrote. Duke beats St. John's, seventy-one to seventy, in the first half of this doubleheader at Madison Square Garden. The Blue Devils, Johnny Dawkins, hit the big basket. And Blue Conaseca disappointed his team won't be in the finals of the Big Apple. But his team played terrific, though, after he can't be disappointed at all with the type of shot they got. The overall performance all evening. You can see the two. They competed up here when Mike was at Army. Chris Lewis, St. John's, but a nice-looking jump shot. Mark Jackson looked in low. Duke did a good job of taking away the post pass. So it's Duke that'll go to the finals on Sunday night. Your final score from Madison Square Garden, Duke 71, St. John's 70.